The lights come up. The camera focuses. You are somewhere between and the reality of your life is on show. We feel compelled to put on a show all the time and on the stage of life, it is filled with some award-winning performances that most will never get to see on stage. Not all of our stories are glamorous. I am Philip Clark. Join me today as we unearth the many roles of real people who share their journey and the lessons learned on that journey. Welcome to Lights, Camera, Real Life. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome again, my friends out there. What to do? This is another exciting episode. Another exciting episode that I really am very appreciative of this moment because the gentleman that I am going to be talking to right now, I am just so privileged that I don't have to go through no agent to talk to him because this is a man who is very busy very, very connected, and uh, it's very difficult to get him. So I am just happy that I can really take up the phone and we can just text our call because, you know, this guy, you know, you don't get to talk to them every day, you know? So ladies and gentlemen, I thank you. I welcome you to uh, our, this is our fourth episode, actually, of season two of Lights, Camera, Real Life. So now I'm going to bring to the stage this young man, this brethren of mine. I mean, a long time we are far where I come from. Ladies and gentlemen, please help me welcome to the stage Mr. Garold Hamilton. What you say, Garold? I'm here, man. Here, here, here. Philip, excited, excited oh, to be I a part it. of your, um, you know, your podcast. Um, you know. It, it, and it's funny, we've come from far. I remember yeah. the days at, 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 at UWE, at Chance the Hall, um, days that I treasured, you know, learned a lot, you know, and, and, and really um, an important part of my journey. You know, so um, I'm always excited to, to talk about it, talk about where I'm from, talking about my, you know, my beginning, because mm -hmm. it, it really helps to shape everything that I'm doing now. Absolutely. So, Garo, yes. I have one little introduction prepared for you. So, yes. can I go ahead, sir? Yes, sir. All right. My friend, them out there, ladies and gentlemen, this young man is an illustrious gentleman, an illustrious son of Jamaica. He is an activist, a philanthropist, by profession, an engineer. Now, real estate developer. As a matter of fact, he's the director of Real Equity Jamaica and the CEO, right, of the Dream to Reality Foundation. And he's also an author. Yes, this man is multifaceted, multi talented, and clearly, as I said, illustrious. He is the author of his best-selling novel. It's called Ghetto Youth's Bible. Now, ladies and gentlemen, I just want to tell you that I have a signed copy of this book, and I have read this book from cover to cover, and I'm very inspired. So, ladies and gentlemen, this is Garold Hamilton. That is how they describe him as, and that's how he probably describes himself as, but I want to describe him as this. This is a young man who I found to be focused, determined, and I want to say, and I'm gonna say a bold statement here. I think he's one of, I consider him one of the heroes of our time and a solid contributor to humanity. And let me just top it all off to say that he's Jamaican. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Garrett, how me do? Did yes, I do justice? Yes, yes you, did. you did. All you did. right, you did. You did. look at you. Yes, ma'am, I'm glad, I'm glad. I always am very happy when my guests are comfortable, you know, because if they're not comfortable, you know, we're not going to get what we want out of the program, okay? Yes. So, welcome, sir, to my uh, podcast. It has been a long time on coming. <laughs> yes. <laughs> but, 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 girl, we're getting to it straight away. Your journey is what I found fascinating, especially from what I read in the book. Yes. 
And ladies and gentlemen, I want you to go and get, get this book, Ghetto Youth Bible. It is clearly a book for, yeah, especially young people, young people who are struggling to find themselves, struggling to actualize. And I think it really puts a lot of things in perspective because he shares his real raw story. And it's some of that we're going to hear today, his real raw story. So Garol, you grew up yeah. in a place called Charlene Temple in Sablamar, yes. Westmoreland, Jamaica. Could you please just share with us for the, for the, for the purpose of the, the, our mm -hmm. audience? Where is this place? What, describe for us, what kind of environment was this? And how really did it shape you as an individual? Yes, so Charlene, the proverbial ghetto, as, as you call it, still is. You know, um, in the book, I describe it as nestled between two cemeteries, the Doyle's and, and, and Tate Cemetery. It's actually right in between two cemeteries. Wow. It's, it's so close that that's where we used to, we used to play football <laughs> over the cemetery. That's where I used to have my own barbershop <laughs> wow. in the cemetery you know, under the, a big tree next to the cemetery. That's how close it was. But, you know, a tough community, but a close-knit community as well. You know, mm -hmm. with a lot of varied individuals that, that help to shape you. They challenge you, but also they're supporters as well. You know, so they're an extension of your family in terms of um, how they, they, they ensure that they keep you in line. You know, it's, uh, it's, it's one of those things that, you know, they see... Um, they see uh, your potential before you see it as well. So there's always um, that community effort that I think that's an important part of my growing up. You know, although it's rough, there's a lot of people, a lot of friends that I know didn't make it, you know, died, you know, um, you know um, get involved in stuff that, that, you know, get involved in crime and, 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 and you know, met the, the, the sad part of, our, you know, um, entered their life, which is, which is something that, you know, helped to, to let, me understand you know that going in that direction can be a detriment so, so when you say so when you say ghetto what kind of thing you're talking about happening in this area so you know traditionally you know board board houses you know two bedroom house i live in you know um with you know four um four 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 of us i'm um, growing up with a mother and father but one of the challenges also is that uh, one of the things that you know in, in ghetto i used to have cousins coming from Hanover, from Kingston and everything to stay with us. At, at most times you have up to eight to 10 people staying in a two bedroom house. That's the thing. We didn't have, we didn't have water to our house. We have to, you know, take show up at, um, at the standpipe um, mm. in the community. You know, that's the, the, you know, there was, I remember we were one of the, the two families that have TV. We had a black and white TV that people used to stand up at the window and watch TV through the window. That's, <laughs> That's how it used to be, you know, and it, it's it's just one of those things that, you know, we, you have to, you know, this is, and, I, and I tell you, this is how crazy it is. My next door diva, next door diva, actually, you know, was <laughs> not to say, you know, was a drug diva, like big time with police come and have raids and stuff, right. you know, next door. So it was so close to me in terms of everything that could have gone bad and could have gone wrong in my community. So were there opportunities that came to you that would have led you down another road? It could have, could have, because most of my close friends are some of my close friends in the community have, and I've gone in that um, direction, mm -hmm. have um, become drug abusers um, in which I, you know, even up till now, I'm actually helping one of them who was and, 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 and and you know he was able to um to kick the habit and 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 become a you know a normal citizen and and doing much better now, um you know there's there's um situation in which and in my community I remember I didn't see a lot of people who went to high school, there wasn't a lot of people there was two that I can remember and it was Amoy um which is a a, a girl that went mining school but immediately she left um man and she left the community and then there was another friend called Pat. And I remember he went to Case, he went to the College of Arts, um, Agriculture. And it was the, those were the only two people. And it's funny that those were kind of my guide, you know, you know, those were, were, were my, 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 my potential. Those are the people that I, that, I, that I said, you know what, that's where I want to go. That's where I want to be. 
you know, because the, the, those were the only two people that I could look at that could be example at that point because I didn't, I've never experienced or see anything else. Mm -hmm. So coming out of that community, it's a privilege to see somebody doing that because normally it's the, it's the, you know, the sub-secondary school, which is not a bad school, but, you know, it's a school that you didn't have to pass at common entrance to go. And, right. and people never used to, you know, uh, magically to, um, to, to university from those schools. And, and that's where it was, you know, we know that, you know, when you leave school, you go to work. That's exactly what it is. Or you go farm. A lot of my uh, friends, them used to have um, ganja field. Ganja, you know, they plant ganja. You know, so it's just like, it's everything that you can think of that what you could know, have been me. But, you know, when I met you, you know, I had no idea. I would not yes. have had any idea that you were coming from such a kind of background. I mean, this yes. guy's a humble guy, guys. He's a humble guy, humble, and he's still very humble. And I, I understand yes. that. But... I would not have guessed. I mean, you don't display the traits yes. of any kind of thing like that. What so? What made a difference? So, so it, it's it's mentorship and guidance. One one um, one part is was um, you know my parents. My mom, you know, uh, you know to you know to be honest, uh, she was the one that um, that was able to 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 guide and 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 shield us and really provide a path and 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 also provide you know, that guidance so that we can go along the right path, you know, on the first, you know, she was a serial entrepreneur, never have a job, never in Jamaica. She has never worked. She sell bag juice. She sells, um, you know, um, drops, greater cake, she be pudding. You know, she had a shop, she had a shop. And to be honest, like they break the shop so much. And I, you know, in every community you have that person and, and we know him like the community that ever Robin, my mother shop wow. you know his name was fox i can't forget it that's how crazy it is because we're going to look for fox when fox when the shop when the shop gets wrong <laughs> no, so, but but it's it's really her providing uh that great background and and really me seeing how um you know how much she fight and how much mm -hmm. she wanted something better for her children that was my guiding light and guiding yeah. principles yeah and on top of that i remember every sunday I used to have to go to church, whether I like it or not. All of us, we march to church because mom, you know, ensure that, you know, we, you know, irrespective of coming out the ghetto, we have we, we three-piece suit. I remember I have pictures in my three-piece suit. We have two suit. As a little youth coming up, everybody, you know, we, well-dressed going to church. Church was an important part of, of, of me growing up and an important part of, of shaping me as well. You know, that, that, that faith. Um, you know, based um, um, principles and, and, and decision and, and, and love for God and knowing that if you pray, you work hard, you know, great things can happen. Is that, so, something, so that's that that's something that you recommend? Is that something that you recommend for young people? Ab absolutely. Absolutely. Without a doubt. Still my rudder, my guidance and, and, and still an important part of everything that I do. Yeah. So you passed for Manning's High School, which, you know, yes. it had a lot of impact on you. Yes. Uh, how would you describe uh, being at high school? As you said, you only saw two people in your community yes. who went to high school. And uh, yes. this. when you, so when you pass for Mannings, that must yes. have been a big thing. Oh man. Oh man. That was, that was huge. And this is how, how, how huge it was. And not to, to divert, but I remember um, we used to have Sunday school at our house um, in, in, in Charlene because Grace and Truth Assembly Hall was a church that, that, that I went and we had some, we had Mr. Vermont and, 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 and Tony Boyd, Anthony Boyd, who are two of the seniors and elders, um, decide that they were going to come in this community because it's a tough community and we're going to have Sunday school on Sundays. Uh -huh. My mom, my parents opened their home to them. So they uh -huh. were used to do Sunday school in the yard. So, and, and Mr. Vermont was a maths teacher at Manning's. So Mr. Vermon took me at, the, at, at about four of us at an early age and, and, and start guiding us and treating us, um, you know, giving us uh, principles, you know, of life, but also we're able to, to go there. I go there every day coming from school to stop, to, to, to practice, you know, all the subjects. And he would mark them and then send you home. So four of us, I remember four of us going through that. And, and I remember out of the four of us, I was one of the, not say I wasn't smart, but I was younger. I was two years younger than than the other three mm -hmm. and i was you know i wasn't they would cast it as i wasn't ready yet for mannings mm -hmm. so i took my first chance my the other three um um boys who were pretty smart also kevin um prince and and and, and mikey 
-hmm. I actually passed before all of them, which was, you know, which, which, which was a surprise to, to, um, to Mr. Vermont. Mm -hmm. But the, the, the situation is that I wanted it much more than them. And I think that's, that, that's rare. because when, when I used to do my work and then I, 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 I would study there, or do my work, I would go home and I would do the same thing. I would, you know, push myself as hard as I can. And to be honest, my, my push was that I was introduced to Manning's before Manning's was introduced to me because my dad used to sell ice cream over Manning's. So he used to sell ice cream in the yard. That, that's what he used to do. You know, he's an ice cream man. Cream of them call him Humphrey. So, so he, were you I, ever embarrassed about that and embarrassed <laughs> for your friends to see you? Because you used to sell bad juice too, don't it? Yes. So yes. Weren't you embarrassed to, to, for your friends oh, to oh, see man. you? Yes, man. I was. And I, and I, and I tell you, so my name's to me um, was the Holy Grail. So going there was just such a great, you know, uh, experience. And it was such, uh, you know, I remember passing my exam and my father lift me up because, you know, he's a Manning's man by heart. He, he was selling at the school from 1978. You know, I was born 75, you know, I went to Manning's 1986. So the history is there. Um, he lift me up in the air, I remember. And like, like this was, you know, the crowning moment for him because this is his son going to a school that he sells ice cream of, you know, that he, you know, that every student know him, but this is his son. And that's how I felt. And that, you know, that's something that still held. It's, I was 10 years old, you know, and I remembered it like yesterday. Wow. That's how important that, that, that moment was for me. Yeah. And I didn't take that, you know, that, that, that for granted. You know, it's one of those things that, that pushed me. Him selling and stuff was always one of those things that as you, you don't understand hustle and grind because you see other people, parents come and they drive cars and they do all type of stuff and everything and they work and they're exposed. So, um, you know, I, I became, uh, it became a norm to me to be a part of it because I remember I used to help him during lunchtime and stuff, sell ice cream. I used to go and help him. You know, he need help, you know, and, and, and people used to appreciate that. And I remember a lot of the kids and the older kids used to, um, they, they, they adore me because they, they think so much of him. Because mm. even if you don't have money and you go to him, he will give you something. Wow. That's, how, that's how he is. And that's what, that's the legacy he created. And up till now, he has, you know, every people. Home for son. That's what they call me. You know, so it's just like I couldn't legacy. hide from that legacy. The legacy, the legacy of, of giving, the leg legacy of, of, of caring, yeah. you know, create that part for me to 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 see um that side as well and, and really, really hold that 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 empathy uh, uh, um you know with you know with people and understand that you know it doesn't matter where you do or what you do, you still have to make an impact. And he was a make making a great impact. In his own way, ah. that 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 even now I'm looking at it, I'm like, man, the man is the hero to a lot of people, yeah. and a lot of people say that to me. Yeah. So that was, you know, that was, a, and at the same time, there was challenges because, you know, he was making a little money, um, and got, you know, got derailed because of poor decision in terms of um, lifestyle, and decided to leave us and leave our household and you know to another family. So that was one of the, you know, the, 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 the challenge, like, you know, seeing my mom experiences, uh, experiencing um, that. And when she was, you know, trying to do her best and work, working hard. And that was something that I've never seen for years going to school. I've never seen another man around my mom because basically she shielded herself around taking care of her children. Mm -hmm. and, and, and because of that, that's how I even the bag juice that I was selling and stuff is for her. It was, she said, you know what? On Fridays sometime, I have to stop. For, I have to stop going to, you know, don't go to school on Fridays. And, and I'm in, I'm selling bag juice. And I remember it was at the buckets. At those times you buy yeah. six, you buy six, you know, six box drinks and you walk up and down Great George Street. Wow. Up and down Great George Street. And you need to make some profit to take home. To your mom so that your mom can feed your brothers and sisters and me and my brother or older brother that's what we do ladies you know, and gentlemen my friend them out there we're talking to ceo of the dream to reality foundation mr garold hamilton and let me tell you something already indus has dropped the nuggets themselves man i can tell you this is this has already been a very inspiring conversation i don't know if it will end coming i wanted to end at this point but garrett garold you said in your um 
in your book in order to make it in life yes you have to do things you find uncomfortable oh man and you know it's funny that that i say that and when you realize that early early in life um it it, it propels you and push you forward and and i i think my whole my whole path and my whole journey has been it's it's been about you know what don't get too comfortable in terms of um in terms of your position in terms of what you do in terms of your standards in terms of you know what what propels you i i it's funny i just i just um I'm now the, the, the director of healthcare for the US. So I'm in charge of about 1400 people. I'm on the global healthcare team. I'm doing something. And, and I remember when I leave, I left my last company. I was a partner at the company for 10 years. I thought that was it, you know, become a partner. I'm the first black partner in the company. The company was 200 and something years. Thought, it, you know, this was the best thing. I'm going to stay forever. Got an opportunity to start to, um, to join a company that or just start in the healthcare in the, the, the DC at Maryland area. And they asked me to come and, you know what, grow it. Grow it from a revenue of $600,000. They asked me to grow it. They mm -hmm. said, you know, I look at it, I'm like, you know what, I'm leaving something that's big that I built for 10 years to go to something that, that, that's complete new, mm -hmm. different type of environment. And I thought, you know what? I need it. I needed that. It's gonna, I'm gonna be uncomfortable, but it's gonna push me. It's gonna, it, it's gonna, it's it, it it's a it's a it gives me a different mindset because once again I'm challenged. Once again, I need to prove myself. Once again, I need to prove to people that listen, I can do this. In three years, I grew the revenue to, to about six million dollars in three years. Whoa, in, in three, three years. years. In five years, they gave, they, 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 I didn't apply for the position. They gave it to me because they said to me, listen, it's unanimous. You've been doing this and you're the face of, of, of WSP Healthcare. You are the face. So it's just like, I didn't have to apply for the position. I know it was uncomfortable. I pushed myself beyond the bounds, but I also, I, do, I did everything that I need to do, knowing that without, knowing that people are watching. And that's one of the things that you should know that whatever you do mm -hmm. in, in your profession, remember what, what you put out there is important because people are watching. Absolutely. So internally, externally. So what you do out there, like I remember I used to not tell them about my nonprofit and what I was doing. And somebody said to me, what are you doing? Like, that's the greatest thing about you. That's you. You're given your compassion, your, your, yeah. your heart. Yeah. And it was just, it, it opens, you know, that, that thing about it's just like, you know what? When I'm uncomfortable, when my back is against the wall, mm -hmm. that's when I'm. That's when I'm at my best. And you that's see, gonna... and you see, it started off by selling bag juice, guys. You see, he was uncomfortable yep. selling bag juice, but he learned. Yep. He learned how to sell. Yes. He learned how to make sales. And said, "No, he can make money for a company." You see how small beginnings. Don't you don't you don't you don't hit small beginnings. You know you don't no. do that. You know Why? you know. At, and you're funny. You said about bag juice. I remember when I used to see some of my friends. I used to be barefoot, walking in, in, in the street selling bag juice. I used to hide. I remember the moment I see them, I would, I would hide around a shop or something because it was embarrassing to me. But, and that's the thing about it. It builds that resilience and that strength that, you know what? You have to do what you, what, what, what you need to do at times to get where you want to go or where you want Absolutely. to get to the destination. Absolutely. You also said um, in your book, um, there, there, was a, there was an opportunity that you, you took on, a, on, on in, in the summer and something yeah. bad happened. Uh, and out of that, you said, you know, I began to understand that you can't trust everyone. Some people yes. will take advantage of you if you allow them to. Tell us a little True. bit about that. True, and it's funny. I remember my... Um... My, my niece read the book and she was seven years old and she came to me and she said, uncle, I, 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 that, that guy that did that to you, that when I, and I'm like, that's the only thing you remember in the book. She said, she said, that's what stand out to me, that people will take advantage of you if you allow them to. And I'm like, wow, 
a six-year-old said that to me, and that was her takeaway from the book. I remember that guy like his yesterday. His name is Bull. I can't forget that guy worked me. <laughs> hey, he we are calling him up here. We are calling him. <laughs> <laughs> He, he 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 paid me the first week and said, "Don't worry about it." Um, you know, it was this space called Belgium, which is behind um, Manning School that I was working um, at at a house, and he was doing a, you know, he was a mason, and I worked with this man the whole summer. And the man said, "Don't worry about it." You know, at the end of the summer, I'm gonna pay you the money. At the end of the summer, there was no money. I didn't. He didn't give me one cent. I didn't understand how. An adult could do that to a to a, a child, to a youth that that needed something, needed the financial help for mm-hmm. school. So that stuck with me for a, for a while in terms of um, in terms of understanding that that people will take advantage of you if they're. It doesn't matter who they are and what they are. So you yeah. have to be careful um, in, in your in your decision, in the people that you get yourself associated with as well. Because not everybody is for you, and not everybody will be, um, you know, will will treat you as as you deserve. Mm-hmm. So how do you protect yourself? Yes. So it, it's and that's the thing. Um, it, it's your decision in terms of who you know, who you choose as friends, who you choose to, um, you know, understanding people, understanding um, um, that you know you will take chances, and and that's one of the things that. Um, that that I know in terms of you can be risk averse, but you have to understand that chances will get you to where you want to go as well. So it's understanding people, understanding know how to to read people as well. Because uh, sometimes um, you know my wife have have the same my wife have the same um, insight. I have the same insight. I look on people, look at their tendencies, and and and, and usually make a judgment, not a judgment for them, a judgment for myself just to understand them, their tendencies, their decision-making. So try to understand how they would treat me. And, and I, I treat, I, I try not to judge. And that's something that's a part of me. Mm-hmm. So looking at people, I'm not judging them, but I'm trying to understand their decision-making process or understand. And it will, it will somehow show me their moral compass. And that's, yeah. that's how, mm-hmm. that's how I, I, I judge people. Speaking and that's of, something that I carry with, carry yeah. with me every day. Speaking of chances, Yes. After 12 surgeries on yes. your knee, you decided yes. to go to you, um, Trinidad. Yes. And you were told to sit yes. out. Yes. Yeah, madman or what? Why did <laughs> you do such a thing I to know. yourself? I know. I know. It, it's, but it's that bold determination, Philip, because I understand, you know, and it's come from, from, from when I decided not to go, not to take up my, 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 um, you know, my, my acceptance at UWE. When I sat down and tell my, and, and defer my place, call the university and defer my place. Because I thought one, my mother didn't have a job. So there's no way, even if I take student loan, she could have afforded to send me to school. My father mm-hmm. at the time had an accident and couldn't sell, you know, at the school anymore. Mm-hmm. So I'm like, there's no chance of me to, I, we didn't have a, con- I didn't even have a conversation with my mom. And that's how crazy it is. I went behind her back and defer the place to the next year because I thought, you know what, maybe it should work this year. But even that, I didn't even have a job because I didn't apply for a job. So mm-hmm. my place was left languishing. I gave it up. I didn't have a job. And I remember for the first like couple of weeks, I'm just on the road, going to football matches, doing all sorts of stuff. And I remember coming home and my mother said to me, hey, girl, what, what exactly is going on? Are you not going out to university? I said, mom, we don't have any money to do that. And my mom said, listen, we don't have money to do that, but we're going to find the money to do it. And this is what's going to happen. I remember she packed my bag. And the next morning, she said, we're going to Kingston and we're going back to UA because you're going to school. Everything last minute. It was three weeks into kept me into school. School started already. I remember our friend Naval. I remember when right. I knew, went on campus, Naval went come on, and, and, and saw me. And he's still, you know, close to my mom, love my mom. The same man. And I remember when, when I went, um, Professor Matt Morris was the Dean of Natural Science at the time. And when I went, the Dean said, listen, um, Miss, Miss McKenzie, your son has deferred his place and, and there's a long waiting list of people. Long. And she said, um, it's almost impossible for him to get in. And I said, mom, you see, let's, let's just 
let's just come back next year. I remember I went back to Spanish Town because I was staying in Spanish Town in Enson City. And my mom would take the bus every morning and we went up to the UE, went up to admission. I don't know what she was doing. Every but morning? Every morning for about two weeks. Every morning. She went and sometimes she would grab my aunt who works at the University of the, of, of the Western Hospital and drag her and the two of them would go over there sometime. Most time I she alone. And when the dean explained to me that this woman was just sitting sometime in admission and just, just putting up her hand and just said, just remember my son. Just remember my son. And after the two weeks, the dean made a decision and see as she shared, she said, go and call him, wherever he is, call him. She called me, I, I jump on the bus and I come up to you. And she said, and the dean said to me, I gave you a place. I gave you a place, I didn't give her a place because of you. I gave you a place because of your mother. And because every day she show up, every day she just, she was just putting up her hand sometime to acknowledge that she's there. Mm. And it was only two persons that actually got, got you. Another person called Small Nels, I can't, Nels, I can't forget her name. And she was related to the warden of Taylor Hall. Oh. So she had connections. So but the divine, had, the divine, the divine happened for your man. You, you're a blessed I a man. I had a mother that 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 decided that no wasn't the appropriate answer for her son because her son needed that education, and that education was the the center of actually moving and pulling my family out of poverty. And I realized at that point what it meant. At that decision that was made, I understand my path i understand what i needed to do mm -hmm. at that point i realized that i did i wasn't doing it for myself yeah you know you understand my family needed clearly it. My mom needed it. you it, understand it so clearly clear. the whole business of the whole business I, I, and hence that's the reason why when i had all the surges and stuff and everything it the, it didn't matter to me i am going to get this degree because i knew what it meant to my family what it mean to my family so I remember I, I wasn't discharged from the hospital in the Philip. I discharged myself. Lord of mercy. So, so this is the story I'm going to, it's no joke. I remember it was a junior doctor who was, who was, who did my surgery and was checking on me. Um, every, every week he checked on me and I said, I said, dog, when am I coming out? Because I'm in this place three months. You know, when am I coming out? I see people going, people come out. I remember I go surgery so much till I had, patients beside me crying when I am going into surgery. That's how much they, 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 they were, you know, connected to me and, 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 and hurt because they saw what I was going through. Mm. Frustration, losing hope, everything that you can think of. But my goal was I want to go to school. I want to basically start my engineering degree. I remember the man said to me, said, um, I'm going on vacation for two weeks. And when he said that, I said, okay. The next doctor came in the morning. I said to him, said, hey, you know, my doctor said I'm coming out next week because more come out before I come back. Mm -hmm. And he said to me, he said to me, um, well, Mr. Hamilton, let me look at um, the foot a little more. And then if it's OK next week, we discharge. I want to get discharged before my main doctor come back. Right. Because he didn't have any like he was saying a month, this and that and everything. And the next week, the doctor came and said, foot look, look a better, Mr. Hamilton, we're going to discharge you. When he discharged me, listen, I was in Kingston. In three months, I was in Kingston. I called my mom and said, Mom, book my ticket to Trinidad. I said, my, at the time, my mom was in the Cayman Island. I didn't even go back to Sablama. I didn't go back to Charlene. Wow. In, so the, the doctor said to me, come on, dress your foot. And, and this surgery was because you met in an accident, right? I met in a, a turbo bike accident. My right. kneecap cap was split into two. It became infected. I had several surgeries try to remove the infection and right. um, eventually they took out the kneecap, you know? So, oh. you know, one, one kneecap, <laughs> they called me Patella when I went to Trinidad because of the so one. You went kneecap. to the Trinidad St. Augustine uh, campus yes. with yes. the Sydney hopping yes. around. Hopping around. And, and, and you were late in the semester as well. Very late, very, very late. I remember Jamel Banton and I, and I said it in my book as well. I remember I called him because at the time we were on Black Eye, you know, together. Right. Um, and he uh, went to Trinidad. So I called Jamel. 
about a month and a half in the semester. And I said, Jamel, how is it going? How is it going? And Jamel said to me, I said, do you think I still come? Because I called the dean and the dean said, you should sit up here because there's no way you can come and, and catch up. And I called Jamel and Jamel said, hey, man, Triple Bunk, he called me at the time. He said, yeah, Triple yeah. Bunk. Yes, I Triple remember. Bunk, no, man. I go to class every day and the only thing you me do is sleep. Me not understand what I go on and stuff and everything. I took all the notes and we have all the notes to give you. But you're, you're way smarter than me. I remember he said that. He said, listen, come. We'll be in the same boat together. So just come. <laughs> and that was, my, that was my rallying call. It's funny. That was my running call. Because my friend that I know, that believe in me, because basically we were close, yeah. was my rallying call. that said, hey, man, come on. You can do it. So when you have friends that believe in you, that yes. really helps you to move yes. you along the path. Yes. You, you, after you, you, you had taken another chance and went to London. Yeah. London, I'm sure, was a whole other experience for you. But most importantly, you found yourself in positions where you probably were the only black guy in several situations. Can you talk a little bit about that? Yes. And, and, and you know, it's funny, you know, so went to London, um, you know, because I, I wanted to, I remember my, my, my professor said to me, if you got the opportunity, I wanted to go and do your master's in London and your PhD. I remember Professor Phelps mm -hmm. said that to me. So my ambition was to go to London. At the time, my mom actually went to London because she was in the Cayman Islands. Oh. Temporarily. You know, so she was there. So at the time, I, you know, you know, I went, I said, you know what? Let's see what it what it at the time I had a Commonwealth visa, which is a two-year visa, the working thing that you could go up and work. So when I went there, it was challenging. I, when I went there, I, I had no, you know, I had no job. I was still applying for engineering job. I wasn't successful because at the time I didn't have a, a universe, a, a, what you call a UK university degree or engineering degree. Um, so they didn't recognize it too much. So I remember applying for 100 jobs, 100 application letters are written. At that, those times you're writing cover letter and you're doing applications. I got 98 rejections. 98 rejections. I got two reply that was you know, for interview. One was for, um, I remember it was a research position that research I wanted me work for free. At that time, that wasn't my option. I need to figure out a way how I could pay my bills or whatever. Uh -huh. The next one was a company called Care Group. And I, th these are, live with me. It was a black guy. And I remember I, 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 drive, uh, I, I took the train. I traveled about two hours for the interview. When I went there, the first thing the man said to me, Mr. Hamilton, let me explain to you the reason why you're not fit for this job. That was the, the introduction. That was what the man said wow, to me. Wow, just like, like that. You, and I'm like, it's a black guy. Why would he, you know? And I'm like, you, you have my resume? He said, he said, you don't have the experience of this job. So I thought at that time, he was just challenging me. So, you know, I composed myself and said, you know, talk about my education background, talking about my you know, my, my, my construction days because mm -hmm. it was a construction company. Mm -hmm. And then after the whole of that, he said to me, Miss Hamilton, I reiterate, you're not qualified for this job. And I'm like, wow. And then he said, oh, you know, I remember he said to me, um, you know, one, you don't have the experience. Two, you, uh, you have a university degree from uh, a university that's not recognized. And I'm like, University of the West that, Indies. University of the West Indies. And I'm like, what is he? And, and, and what, what he actually meant, I try to, you know, I, I try to understand what he was saying to me. And I think if he was, maybe if I was in his position, I, I would say, you know what, young man, let me give you some tips on understanding what he was trying to say. But I try to read through the lines. And what he was saying is that one, you have a degree from the Caribbean, even though it's a good degree. Having something from 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 um, at, at that time from the UK would make you um, a little much more you know sellable in marketable. terms of um, and, and much more marketable in terms of your position. So immediately I thought, you know what? There's some boxes I need to take. One, I'm going to try to get my masters. Figure out how to get my masters. So I'm going to work and do what I. Uh, my plan was to work and pay for it. If that's what I was going to do, you know, I you know. <laughs> I got to say it's luck or, you know, blessings um, that I work at a magazine company for one year that 
really <laughs> that really um, helped me to articulate myself to 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 be customer facing and help me to uh, to deal with challenges because at the time we were delivering magazines to um to different customers and sometimes they didn't get their magazine and they would call and they would curse and they would do this and i remember how much i was able to navigate to calm people and the impact that i have on them and i didn't understand i didn't i didn't know and and i learned something about myself for that whole year i actually you know my boss thought i was great at doing it you know he thought you know you're the best it's not my he knows i wasn't there for long because you know i have an engineering degree mm -hmm. but that year actually taught me a whole lot of stuff that i'm i'm, I'm still using now it's customer facing business development uh -huh. um learning to understand people uh -huh. learn how to calm people absolutely um and, and you know be empathetic but also um be compassionate and that's the thing about it put yourself in their shoes but also show them somehow that hand in hand i will get dirty with you and figure out how i could help you and that's that's exactly what 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 i do up to today every experience Everyone. is very instrumental to your path Absolutely. to your journey so Absolutely. you never discount any aspect of your journey because as you said you did that so many years ago and it is helping you right now right now doing. right now and 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 to be honest i got a job about a year after with um with a small company that it was great that it was with a small company because they taught me everything that I knew. And I remember um, going there, um, <laughs> they interviewed, they offered me the job. They offered me a salary of eight pounds an hour. At the time, it was like almost close to minimum wage, but I didn't care. I just wanted to get on the ladder. Mm -hmm. When I when they interviewed me, they offered me and I'm like, and the, I remember the lady said to me, hey, do you know that it was 12 pounds an hour minimum they were offering? I said, it's fine. It's, you know, they gave me eight pounds. I took it in two months. I, I was getting 15 pounds an hour in, 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 in six months. They, my, my salary was doubled, you know? So I realized that the only thing I needed to do is to get on that, get on that letter. Just, wow. just get on the track. My and, friend, and uh, my friend, ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> why people, people, listen to me, man. Yes. I'm talking to Garold Hamilton. Garold Hamilton, the, the CEO of, of Dream to Reality Foundation and many other things. He's a trained engineer and he's just, he's just you know, riding the waves. And he's talking about his experiences that really show us how important all aspects of our life is just so instrumental. We have to own all of it. Garrett, Garold, we keep on saying Garrett. Garold. You said in your uh, book, when things get a little tougher, you must readjust yourself and work a little harder. Yes. And, and that's, you know, that's, that's my whole um, principle of, of, of navigating through this, through this life. That we have to understand that nothing is going to be a smooth, smooth path. You know, it, it's, you know, if it's not the, the bike accident, um, you know, if it's not, you know, being two months late for, for, for a, a three and a half month semester, which, you know, <laughs> you shouldn't pass or you should fail, uh, but I didn't fail. Right. You know, it's, it's, it's really figuring out, you know, it's telling, telling someone that you would never able to play football again. Somebody that love football. Yeah. Um, and understanding that, you know what, maybe maybe i still can run on one kneecap with one kneecap i don't know but i did and i played football and same i've just finished playing football today so this is how crazy it is is that when you know when you experience challenges you know you have to uh, i i feel that you should you should you should rise to the occasion you should understand that it's a part of your 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 journey mm. it's a part of your growth as well it's so important that challenges will will help you in in, in being resilient and, and 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 it's it's those challenges that that i've been through you know through my life in which it, it helped to shape me so much that uh, to, to, to be honest I, I i feel i'm i can do anything that's how um bold uh, you know my, my my mindset is and that's because of my journey it's because i i've i've veered off the path Sometimes by by decision making, I veered out of the park. Mm -hmm. Sometimes accidentally, but 
my 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 eyes always on the prize and always on 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 achieving on on gaining success of being the best i can and being the best version of myself yes so i'm telling us say him, him determined is a determined man him having a book with some 10 commandments yes him write 10 commandments and yes. the one focused on the last one he says thou shalt pay it forward Yes. And Garol, you're doing just that right now. Yes. You started the Dream to, Dream to Re Reality, Foundation. Reality Foundation. What inspired you and what continues to motivate you? To so, you know, I, I remember most of um, most of the, the happier time in my, in, in my life was was because I was actually um, getting helped. Um, from someone, mm -hmm. if it's from a mentor, if it's from a, a football coach, I remember um, Coach Everton Tomlinson. Um, these people give you wings. These people um, uh, will, will figure out um, your strength before you know that strength. And understanding that if you can be a mentor, if you can give back and give a, a youth the opportunity to grow, the opportunity to change their life. That's 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 invaluable. That's something that I my when I when I do something and get something back in return. I remember I just got a note from a um from a, a eight year old, and she decided to hand write a note to me to thank me for a tablet. Um, and, and in the note, she wanted to promise me that she's gonna use it to the best of her ability and, and she's going to make me proud. And wow. I remember I couldn't find a paper to write her note back. And I, I found the back of something and write her note back that I know that she will make me proud. Yeah. And that's, those are, are, are the simple things in terms of giving that that's the important part of me. My father was a giver. My mother is a giver. I remember when my mother cooked in the community, everybody could come and eat food. That's how she is. So it's such an important part of me. And I, and I really think that the more I give is the more I get back tenfold and receive mm -hmm. um, the blessings that comes from it is absolutely amazing. And it, it nothing in the world energizes me more than wow. giving back. Yeah. Just like yeah. sometimes, to be honest, sometimes I don't even know where I'm, I'm, I'm I would just pledge it. <laughs> like, to be honest, I'm going to pledge, you know, I'm, I'm adopting the Sablamar Primary School. I'm actually coming to Jamaica to, to do a, a signing of a memor memorandum of understanding um, with the Minister of, of Education and National Educational Trust to donate uh, $3 million over the next two years to my primary school that I went to in Sablamar. Wow. So, so there's no shame in being an underdog. Eh? There's oh, no man. shame in being an underdog. You rose to the occasion and why did you rise? Yes. Carol, yes. and our young men are, in my opinion, yes, are being lost. And yes. there are so many examples yes. uh, to prove that. And you are you are a young man who was faced yes. with multiple opportunities to yes. be derailed into a wrong direction or you know. Yes. And when you think about your experiences and what is happening now, I know we yes. can't save the world. We know that, right? We can't save the world. But how do you think we should approach the situation of, you know, helping young men to be, to yes. actualize as, as you have? Yes. How do you, apart from your foundation, I know that you, you yeah. know, you cut up schools and so forth and so on. Yeah. But how do you think as a community Yes, we can deal with things like that. You know, so one of the things that I that I realize is, it, you know, we can't hide from 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 the facts in terms of what's going on, and it's not only Jamaica. It's um, right. It's we're losing our men, uh, and 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 for some reason, they are most more distracted than than our females. Uh, you know, my 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 daughter is much more focused. My my nineteen year old daughter is much more focused than my twenty year old son. For some reason, I don't understand, even with mentorship and what I can do. But I think one of the things that 
um, being strong, you know, as fathers also, that's something that, that, that's, that's a challenge. Um, and if we don't have fathers, we have to create father figures for them, mentors, and, 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 and show them, illustrate, have examples. Examples like people like myself from Charlene. I go back to Charlene. I'm doing a back to school when I go back in, um, in August. Show them. Show them what success looks like. Mm -hmm. Show them what hard work looks like. Show them what making the right decision looks like. We have to bring them illustration because they don't see it. What they see every day is, you know, is scamming. What they see every day is something that's different from yeah. what their views of success is different because of what they live and what they see. Mm -hmm. You know, so it, it's it's for us and it's incumbent for us, people like me, and, and I would implore on, 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 on people who made it out of these getters as well mm -hmm. to go back, try to give back somehow and, and make an impact, make a mark. A lot of a lot of my friends, I can tell you, would leave Savlama and would turn their back. And they're very successful. That's one of the things that any, even my business partners, I would reach out to them to help these youths and stuff, and they would gladly help. But for some reason, we lack that gravitas gravitas to, to 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 just go back and 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 really help our community i think we're such we're listen we're important part of this and especially for the young men mm -hmm. they want to see us they want to see us with them don't be afraid you know to 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 be exposed to 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 you know don't be afraid to sit and have conversations with them because that's when you sit down and understand their mindset and the little conversation that you have with them can change your life. And I could, I'm going to give you an example. When I did my book launch in Sablamar, mm -hmm. that was the most rewarding moment for me in my life. When I, I it, it, a week before I decided I'm going to book, do the launch, one week, no ad advertisement, nothing at all. When I came to the, the, the um, Sean Lover Hall, there was about 300 and something people. We waiting for me wow. to hear me speak to buy my book. Buy it. They didn't want to get the book to buy the book for twenty five hundred dollars to twenty twenty seven hundred dollars. They want to buy it. I remember some a guy came to me and said, uh, "Mr. Hamilton, me have fifteen hundred dollars more on the book." They are well dressed. Them they wearing on jeans. Them come this Mr. Hamilton, me can't come on your, your your thing in a, in, a, in a jeans. People women never see in a dress pants and stuff and everything. The, the proverbial bad man, them what they yeah. stuff and everything. They all come and they want a book and they want to hear positive words. They want to hear stories with people that look like them and come from the same situation like them. We have to tell those stories. We have to go and mentor these youths and, and be with them and just show them that there is a path. There is a path if you work hard, if you're resilient, if you're, if, 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 if you have a dying attitude of success to push yourself, to continue to, to lift yourself from your situation, to show them that, listen, I was there. I was there. Yeah. But you can get yourself out. Absolutely. Ladies yes. and gentlemen, my friend, um, I, I am full this afternoon. I am talking to Garwood Hamilton, a good friend, a colleague, a long time, long time friend. And he's currently, among other things, you know, the, the CEO of Dream to Reality Foundation. And he just shared beautifully about being that positive person in someone's life because people need it. Garwood, I usually end my show with this question. Yes. And I would love you to tell me if there was one young person listening yeah. to you right now, yes. what is that one thing you would tell them? Yeah, it, it, it doesn't matter where you start. It doesn't matter your current situation. It doesn't matter your midpoint. It doesn't matter what challenges that you, you experience. Where are you going or where you end up? It's totally up to you, up to your decision up to how you handle challenges. You know, my situation was dire, mm -hmm. you know, was dire, but I had dreams. Yeah. 
Yes, I had dreams. And that's why dream to reality is, is, is my foundation. I have dreams. And, and, and when, you, when you believe that you're more than your situation, it, it gives you wings. It gives you that, that, that bold attitude that, that you can be great. You know, so don't let your current situation dictate your future and your decision. You know, it's, 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 it's truly a sentiment um, to, to, to reach out to, to youths because that's something that, um, that I treasure. That's something that, that helped me um, to be where I am, to, you know, uh, mentorship and, 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 and also re being a youth from a, a, a ghetto community that's, I would say at the, the top of my game in engineering and, and, and investments and real estate and everything that I do, it's something that I think that's truly achievable if we decide that we want to work hard and we want to, we want to, to be the best that we can and, and, and leave a legacy, a legacy that, that, that your, peer, your kids, um, your family, your friends um, uh, can look back and say, hey, he made a mark. And that's, 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 that's my Absolutely. thing. I, 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 I Absolutely. want to make my mark. <laughs> that's a fitting, fitting statement to end on. Carol, let me tell you something, man. One, I want to tell you, thanks for just come on and just share from your heart and yes. just share surreal and down to earth and your legacy, I know. Yes is going to be here for a very long time. And I'm glad that you're a young man who is showing others that, listen, it's not about the chopper lifestyle. There are yes. other things that we can become. Our dreams can become reality. And me, me there, me, I am inspired. Lord, God, no, I am very inspired by you. And so I just want to thank you for being my guest on no Lights, problem. Camera, Real Life. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Philip. What wow, good. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, my friend, I'm out there. Unfortunately, we have come to the end of this episode. Ah, I got to pause to kind of just take this all in. <laughs> but let me just say to you, if you want to listen to this podcast again, you can actually get it on all the platforms that you listen to your podcast on anchor spotify google and you also can listen to it on youtube so remember to like subscribe and share this channel let me tell you something you will not regret it <laughs> <laughs>